What's up guys, welcome back here. So this really kills me inside to do. Taking wire brushes to the factory undercoating of my pretty mint Honda S2000. As you can see, I already started scrubbing the undercoating off of these control arms on the edges here and I will continue to do that until I have a nice clean seam all the way around because tomorrow morning my buddy from work is coming over and we are going to weld the seams of these control arm mounts just like the Honda technical service bulletin suggests on an AP1 and I believe the early year AP2s these brackets are only spot welded from the factory in three spots really just one two three on each side and they're known to pull away from the frame if you run really sticky tires and autocross and track the car a lot mine have not shown any signs of separation yet However, I'm going to be proactive on this rather than reactive and wait for something catastrophic to happen. I'm going to go ahead, take care of these for the peace of mind, then go ahead and reprime them and then repaint them and re-undercoat this area to prevent any corrosion. It does hurt inside to take off the factory finish, but this will be a much stronger and permanent solution than the factory weakness that is known on these cars. So one thing you're going to want to do is pop your brake lines off take this clip off right here once you get the clip off you're going to want to undo your brake line pull this out be careful brake fluid is going to spill you're going to want to rotate this brake line out of the way so you can get to the inside surface and uh, weld on each side of these brackets here All right guys, so here is the final thing I'm going to use to clean up some very tight edges and make sure the seams are, are cleaned out. Is this Dremel, and I got a little uh, wire brush kit from Harbor Freight um, to put on the Dremel and get in the really tight spaces. But I'll show you what I got done with the drill. I used a Warrior $5 multi-pack from Harbor Freight, the wire wheel set, the one that's always on sale in the coupon. So this is the driver's side. I'll get the lighting a little bit better for you. But all the seams are very clean on each side. There's the front mount. Cleaned up oh, just a little bit above where the seam meets the body up there. And then on this side, same deal. Passenger side looks about the exact same. I'm just going to hit those very tight corners right now with the Dremel. All right, guys, so here is the final product before I uh, paint it and uh, clean up the welds and everything. But as you can see, we seam welded every spot that was uh, flush to the frame. We did uh, you know, the middle section, the top section, and then looped around the bottom there. And as you come over here, you can see got all the way around the bottom edge, side right there. Just trying to work the light here. The part that lays flat there left a little gap for where it rises up, and then up here it rises up as well, and then there as well over here down at the bottom of course the welds are a little dirty had a little problems with the undercoating because I didn't peel any off in the backside bubbling up and kind of catching on fire for a quick second we just blew it out quick but as you can see got lots of good penetration we practiced on a test piece that was the same thickness as the uh, brackets and the frame just to make sure the settings were right on the MIG welder again we used a Hobart MIG welder that just plugged right into my uh, 110 volt AC outlet did a great job so that's kind of an overlook at the four edges we welded I'll take you to the other side it's going to look very very similar as you can see there oh yeah all kinds of good welds this thing is on there indefinitely now and it's not going to ever pull off of course, as you can see, I took the fender liner off on both sides just to prevent that from catching any sparks and fire and melting. I had to pull the uh, brake lines away from the bracket here. Of course, I took them off the bracket and then just kind of torqued them left and held that there with the zip ties. So we had plenty of clearance to get the welder in there on both sides. And now I'm going to have to take the wire wheel to these again with the Dremel. And then I'm going to hit them with some alcohol prep them really well, get them really clean, bare metal, hit it with some primer, and then hit it with some paint, and then hit it with some, um, I was going to use undercoating, but I chose to get some truck bed liner 
that I'm going to spray on them because I think it's a lot more durable of a product than the rubberized undercoating they sell uh, from rust -Oleums. All right, so I just used the Dremel again to clean up the welds after we got them done before paint here. And uh, as you can see, they look pretty phenomenal now that they're all cleaned up. Um, you know, as of course there's no marks all over them and burn marks anymore. Uh, as you can see, every side nicely done up. Bring over here. So what I'm going to do now is wipe everything down with alcohol. Probably brake cleaner first on some clean rags, and then rub some uh, alcohol over everything. All right, so I'm getting ready to apply the first actual coat of black uh, paint. This is the Rust-Oleum uh, Professional High Performance stuff from Home Depot. This is a uh, flat black, and I'll just show you the prime work I did. So you can see I just used the automotive primer all over that clean metal. And now you know, I got it up top too because the wire brush hit up top. Also touched up the uh, brake line bracket a little bit because that had some chip paint on it. All right, so this is with the matte black paint, two coats finished. Just want to give you a look at how it's coming along in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some bed liner. I'll show you that can in a second, but I'm going to try to put the bolts in and mask the bolts off where the raw steel is exposed so I don't get bed liner in the threads and stuff because then I'm going to have a bad time uh, running the bolts in. So. so this is the stuff I'm going to be using to finish it off with some truck bed coating. It's like $8 for the can. And I uh, got it from Home Depot, but I think this will keep everything pretty uh, pretty locked in. All right, guys, so this project is now complete. You can see, uh, I'll try to get the lighting right, but this is how it looks with the bed liner on there. I did like three coats back to back to back. I didn't really stop. The stuff is really runny, so it did start to run on me and drip down on the subframe, but <clears throat> not a big deal since it's the same color. But I really like the textured look. It feels very durable. And um, I'll show you the other side because I put the other control arms and the fender liner in the other side. But it kind of looks like an OEM appearance in there. I'll show you the uh, completed side. Started bolting the control arms back on. <clears throat> with the POR 15 and whatnot. So, let's see it's in there like that. And then you can see how it looks nice and textured like the OEM finish in there. All in all, the car is ready now for any tire you throw at it, really. Um, this is no longer a weak point with those being seam welded. But let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe, of course. And uh, give a like to the video. I know there's not really any other S2000 videos going over this, this DIY here online so uh, yeah let me know what you guys think I'll see you in the next one